Hey guys, by now you know the two playlists that I'm working on. The first one is the LLM concepts playlist where I'm teaching concepts related to LLMs. And that's where today's video will go. And the second one is the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist where we have hands-on projects. Now in the project series, the next video is going to be about fine-tuning a Llama 3 using Peft and Lora. So this means in order to explain to you guys how that particular project works, I have to make three different videos, one about fine-tuning, then about Peft, the third about Lora to get you guys up to speed about what all this really is. So today's video is about fine tuning, so let's get started. Now, large language models based on the transformer architecture like GPT, T5 and BERT have achieved state of the art results in various natural language processing tasks. They have also started foraying into other domains such as computer vision and audio. The best way to get the most accuracy and effectiveness out of an LLM is to use a pre-trained LLM, which is basically pre-trained on a huge internet data set but then also fine tuning it for your own personal use case. This gives the model essential additional context about your use case and thus it performs better. Fine tuning these pre-trained LLMs on your own data sets results in huge performance gains when compared to using the same pre-trained LLMs right out of the box. So what exactly is fine tuning? Fine tuning is basically taking a pre-trained model, training at least one of the model's parameters with some data. Now models have millions of parameters, right? Like GPT-4 has 1.2 trillion parameters, Llama 3 has a 400 billion parameters option and so on. What we're effectively saying is that even if we train just one of these billions of parameters, it will classify as fine tuning. So let's use an analogy here. You can think of a pre-trained model as a raw iron ore and think of the fine tuned model as a much more refined product like process iron. And that's essentially what fine tuning allows us to do. That means that the process by which we get this is what we're calling as fine tuning. And this process itself can be optimized to a great degree. And we will look at those various variations like LoRa, QLoRa, LoRa Plus in later videos. Today, we're just discussing fine tuning. Now, iron, as you know, can be processed even further and you can turn it into stainless steel by mixing it with more things. And we can extend our analogy as well. In LLMs also, you can process much further by mixing other LLMs along with our own LLM. And that's actually something called as LLM blending. And we will also see that in a later video in the same series. So here's an example of a Llama 3 model that's not been fine tuned. So when I ask it for movie recommendations, it has no context about who I am. So it's just going to hallucinate and make stuff up. But if I find you in the same Llama 3 model on data set of movies that are liked by people based on their interests, gender, age, hobbies, their education, and the type of job they have. And then if I share my interests, hobbies, my age, etc., and ask it to recommend a movie, I'm going to get a more personalized answer. Now I've given you the example of a movie recommendation system here, but there are infinite possibilities. And this is why companies are very excited about this because they can just share their historical data about user behavior and purchases, and they can find new patterns that were never discovered before. Developers are also using this and building new products like highly personalized AI girlfriends, AI influencers, AI mental health experts, and so on. So sky really is the limit and it all begins at fine tuning. So you've seen a fine tuned Llama 3 model outperforms an out of the box Llama 3 model, but not only that, researchers have seen that even smaller models, if fine tuned with high quality data, can completely outperform much, much larger LLMs. So you could say that a 7 billion parameter mixtral model, if fine tuned on a great data set, can probably outperform the 400 billion parameter model of Llama 3 straight out of the box. And this was actually proven by OpenAI when they shared a report on how Instruct GPT, their small 1.3 billion parameter model, outperformed GPT-3, their 175 billion parameter model in some custom use cases. Now that we have an idea of what fine tuning is, let's look at the three ways to fine tune a model. The first one is self-supervised fine tuning. This is very similar to how a base or foundational model is trained in the first place, which is you give it a set of data and then ask it to generate completions. So let's look at an example here. We give the model a sentence like Ferrari is a great and it'll generate or predict a completion like sports car. So that's self-supervised learning, meaning you're not telling it what the output looks like. It's responsible for figuring that out. Now, I just mentioned that this is how training a model in the first place works. So what's really the difference between uh, training and fine tuning? Well, with fine tuning, the big difference is that the data that you'll provide it would be specific to your use case or the narrow use case you want the model to perform better in. So the data is really the key here. The second method is supervised learning. This is where the data set already has an input as well as a expected output and giving it an output tells it how to think and act. And that's why it's called supervised. You're providing guidance or supervision with the help of outputs. So the data would look like this. The input tab would have a question like, where is Melbourne? And in the output tab, the answer would be Australia. So these are essentially question and answer pairs. 
And by the way, in many cases, when you ask a question to a base pre-trained model that's not been fine-tuned, you sometimes get back a question in the response. So if we ask a non-fine-tuned Lama 3 the question, where is Melbourne, it might respond with, uh, with a question like, where is Sydney or where is Adelaide? Because it's just looking to complete the sentence with other word embeddings that are stored closer to Melbourne. And we've already seen that in the Transformers video. So essentially, when we fine tune a model with these questions and answer data sets, we're teaching the model how to answer questions. Usually, you would convert this table into a set of prompts and create prompts like, please answer the following question, and then add the question as well as the answer in the same prompt. This makes it easy for the LLM to understand the data. The third way to fine tune a model is reinforcement learning. This learning method has many variations, but we we'll look at the one used by OpenAI, where this has three different stages. The first stage is supervised fine tuning, which was in fact our second method of fine tuning. So what we're saying here is that the way we begin reinforcement learning with is supervised fine tuning. So this essentially picks up where the previous methods stop. The second stage of reinforcement learning is training a reward model. What this means is that it's a method that generates a score based on the accuracy of the output. High quality outputs generated by the LLM get a high score, and low quality outputs generated get a low score, and the model is taught to gravitate towards higher scores and thereby incentivized to generate higher quality results. So how do we know which output had higher accuracy and which had lower? Well, we use the help of human labelers to determine this and score the output and thereby giving the reward to the model. And this is at the heart of reinforcement learning. since the learning of the model is being reinforced with rewards from a human labeler. The third stage is reinforcement learning with any popular reinforcement learning algorithm. And OpenAI uses PPO here, which stands for Proximal Policy Optimization. So what you do in PPO is you take your prompt and you pass it to your model that's been fine-tuned already under supervision, and you pass the output to the reward model, and the reward model will give feedback to the fine-tuned model. And this process goes under a lot of iteration, and this is how the LLM will get really accurate for the specific use case. So we've learned about fine-tuning and the different ways of fine-tuning. Now, we need to look at the process of fine-tuning, which is similar no matter which fine-tuning method you plan to use. So first, we start with a pre-trained model, meaning you have to select the right model for your task based on various factors. Maybe you don't have a lot of compute and GPU, so you might want to go for a smaller model like Dolly 3B. Maybe you want more accuracy, so you might go for a mixture of experts model like Mixtral 7B. Maybe you want a huge model because the task is varied and complex, so you'll go for uh, Falcon 180B. Or if you want an uncensored model, you might go for Dolphin 2.5B and so on. Then is the dataset selection, curation, or even generation stage, meaning if you can get your hands on the right data, then you just have to select the right version and format of that data. Usually, this includes lots of scraping and changing the format of the data. But if you have loads of data and you want only relevant information and data after cleaning and massaging to fine tune the model with, you'll go with curation. And if your use case is super niche and you're unable to find data for it, you might need to use something called a synthetic data generation. Then we have task formulation, where we will specify the task we want the model to perform on this data set. Common tasks include text classification, text generation, question answering, summarization, and so on. Then we have to think about the model architecture. Do we want to adjust all the parameters or only some? And we will actually cover this in more details in our upcoming transfer learning and PEFT videos. Then you have the fine tuning process itself, which has four stages. Initialization, where we initialize the pre-trained model with its weights and parameters. Training, where we train the model on the new data set using techniques like backpropagation and gradient descent. And as we know by now, during this training, the model adjusts its parameters to better fit the patterns in the new data set. Then there's validation, where we monitor the model's performance on a separate validation data set to ensure it's not overfitting, which is memorizing the training data without generalizing well to new data. Don't worry, we'll have a complete video on backpropagation, gradient descent, and overfitting soon. So if, even if these terms don't make sense to you, don't worry. And finally, we have hyperparameter tuning, where we fine tune hyperparameters like learning rate, batch size, and regularization strength to optimize the model's performance. Now, if you didn't understand a word from this, don't worry. There's going to be a video on hyperparameters and hyperparameter tuning as well. Our sixth stage is evaluation, where we evaluate the model's performance on a test data set that it hasn't seen before. This gives us an unbiased estimate of how well the model will perform in the real world. Finally, we deploy the model for use in our application or even integrate it into other systems where it can make predictions. Now, don't forget to check out the other playlists on this channel, like the 55 Golang project playlist, the 50 Rust projects playlist, and the LLM and Gen AI projects playlist, and this one, of course, which is the LLM concepts playlist. So there's a lot of content on this channel. Make sure you subscribe and share it with your friends because all of this content is so free. And especially if your friends are learning LLMs, this is probably the best channel to check out. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.